G'day everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel. So to fill in the void of the dreaded pre-finals buy, I thought it'd be a great time to go over my personal top 25 recruits from the 2023 AFL season. Now for anyone wondering what I do mean by the word recruit is just simply players that were picked up by new clubs from last year's trade period and even a few selections from the pre-season supplementary selection period from this year. Uh, so yeah, going over 25 players, so quite an amount. Last year I did only a top 10, but I felt now that's it's probably not enough. We want a bit more of a sample size given there were a lot of movements this year. Almost 50 movements. So yeah, plenty to go over. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you do go on to enjoy today's video. And let's get into it. Okay, everyone. So here we are. We're going to be kicking it off, of course, in 25th spot and working our way up. And for the first player I have got is Billy Frampton from the Collingwood Footy Club. Came across from the Adelaide Crows for a third round pick. And I think he's been pretty serviceable this year for the Pies. He's had some nice moments. He's only played 15 games this year and yeah, look I think in the grand scheme of things he's not really the best 22 sort of type um, but I think he's still been important for them when he's been back there in defense he's been uh, quite decent in the intercept sort of marks game um, defensive loss percentage is actually quite a good number of 19.4 percent so yeah when the ball's in his sort of his vicinity from what I've watched I think he's been yeah pretty quite decent enough uh, so yeah given they paid really a third rounder for Frampton important key uh, back stocks as well given they didn't really have many prior to, to this year I think he's been um, yeah pretty successful acquisition given uh, the expectation. So Frampton in 25th. Moving up now into 24th, and I do have Jaden Hunt from the West Coast Eagles, the first free agent player on this video, and usually free agency does give these rankings, um, gives the player a bit more upside given that uh, club paid absolutely nothing for them. So yeah, I think for the Eagles this year, he's been quite good. Um, came over, of course, from the Ds, was playing a bit of a, a, a bit of a sort of utility sort of role for the last few years at Melbourne, but found his home across halfback for West Coast this year, and I think he's um, been quite good um, for the Eagles, almost averaging 20 touches this year. Um, he's been sort of playing that seagull role so he's had games where he's really racked up the footy um, gives him a bit of drive from halfback as well especially on the big oval of Optus Stadium and I think just especially as well you know given he's a bit of a veteran 28 years of age I think the next few years he will be an important part of their rebuild um, so yeah will be a crucial role player and I think this year he's been yeah, pretty serviceable. So the uh, 24th position goes to Jan Hunt. We're now into 23rd spot, and I'm going to be giving this guy a little bit too much love, probably. I think most people will maybe disagree with this one, but I'm going to be going with Will Setterfield from the Essendon Footy Club. Missed most of this year with injury. He only played 10 games, but from the 10 games he did play, I thought he was pretty impressive for the Dons. They've always been crying out for their big body midfielder, and I think especially early in the season, he was going off. He was averaging, I think he was getting 30 touches a game the first few rounds of the year whilst Essendon were up and about. Again, the price tag, an absolute beauty. They gave, um, I think, only really, a, yeah, it was a fourth round pick to Carlton to get him. He isn't really a greatest ball user, of course, and maybe his two-way running can be a little bit questionable, but he has the ability to win the footy. Um, and yeah, it hasn't been really Essendon's season too much. Again, only 10 games, but I still think um, from the output, it has been good. Good. And the price is an absolute beauty too. So I've got Setterfield in 23rd spot. Moving up the ranks into 22nd now. And I do have Tanner Bruin from the Geelong Cats. The Cats paid pick 18 to acquire services. And look, I think this was a year... I don't think we're expecting Tanner Bruin to go off the charts. He's still a very young player, young midfielder. It is a hard midfield to transition into when there's just been some star-studded players the past few years for the Cats. You know, Selwood's first year out of footy. So, yeah, a few more young midfielders have gone in there alongside the likes of, um, you know, a game, of course, with uh, Mitch, a few games with Mitch Nevitt and uh, Jai Clark played a game, Ted Closey, um, of course, also Bowes and um, Max Holmes, of course, the big one too. But, yeah, Bruin's been a little bit up and down this year. I think he's had some, you know, some low disposal sort of games but a few games this year he has impressed me I mean he has a really good ball winning ability I think he's going to be a pick for the future of course but just based off this year didn't light the world on fire but I thought he had um, some a few games that didn't impress me so yeah Tanner Bruin in 22nd now in 21st place I have Dan McStay from the Collingwood Footy Club another one of these free agents that uh, the Pies got absolutely nothing for now McStay's only played 12 games this year and he's missed most of this season or really much almost half the year with injury but he is now back in the team and I think a few games this year he has impressed me he has he's always had a really good ability to take a good clunk inside 50 and the pies are probably in the bigger in the bigger picture of things still crying out for that traditional key forward my checks had a great year that's definitely safe to say but yeah McStay's always made a bit of a cameo here or there with a nice uh, few moments ability to take a mark kick some nice goals 16 goals in 12 games averaging 1.3 goals a game it's not 
not bad, um, especially for a free agent. There was a bit of high expectations on him this year, uh, but the injury hasn't helped him. But I just think his output's been, yeah, pretty good, uh, good enough, uh, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think he can have a big final series. Let's see. We've got McStay in 21st. In 20th position now, got another Collingwood play here. Oleg Markov, the boy from Belarus. What a revelation this guy's been this year for Craig McRae. He's played almost every game this season, with that being 20. And he cost the Pies absolutely nothing. It, he did join through the uh, preseason supplementary selection period. And uh, yeah, he hasn't really lied to the world on fire, but he does light the world on fire with how he does play. He does love to take a game on. We all know about his pace. He's perfectly fit. He fits in like a glove with um, Collingwood system. That rebound off halfback, just getting a go. Handball. Handball received, just getting run, smash the footy forward. Um, and yeah, just given he cost the Pies nothing this year, playing almost every game. Um, you know, he's probably still one of the worst players in the best 22, but he gives it his all. And just a, an important role play. So he's had a nice year, Oleg Markov, got him in 20th. In 19th position now, I do have Lockie Hunter from the Melbourne Demons. It did cost the Ds a third round pick uh, to acquire his services from the Bulldogs. And... Yeah, there's not really too much else to be said. I think he's just had a good year. Um, he's fitted into Melbourne's setup really nicely alongside the wing. He's played almost every game this year. I think he did miss one game, I'm pretty sure, with suspension. But yeah, he's worked well in tandem along the wings, of course, with Ed Langdon, uh, averaging 22 touches this year. A really nice, productive year. And uh, yeah, just a one, un another one of those important role plays in a top side of the Melbourne Footy Club. So yeah, Lockie Hunter, 19th. In 18th position now, I do have Connor McKenna, the Irishman from the Brisbane Lions. Cost the Lions absolutely nothing to acquire his services. Came through the preseason supplementary selection period. God, I love that bloody name. It's an absolute beauty. Um, but yeah, uh, McKenna's just had a nice year for, for the Lions. And look, I think with a few players um, that we felt would go off a bit this year or would be best 22, you know, Kitty cullen has been in and out of the side. He hasn't been at his high potential we all thought he would be this year. Dean Rich has been out the side. It's given opportunity like him and Darcy Wilman and a few, other, a few of those other younger players. But yeah, McKenna's impressed me the few games this year. He's a bit of an erratic ball user. We all know that, but uh, loves to take the game on. Um, drive off halfback's good. And he averages quite nicely in the meters game department too. So yeah, I think he's had a, a nice, uh, quiet and nifty sort of year for um, the Brisbane Lions. And I do have him in 18th. Now we move on into 17th position, and this one's a little bit of a controversial one. I think a few people might disagree with this one here, but I've got Jacob Hopper from the Richmond Tigers. Now, the reason why I have him probably this low is, well, first off, he's been injury-prone this year. He's been out injured. That's not a great thing. Um, he's been injury-prone now the last few years. He was injured the last couple of years before he moved over um, at the when he was at the Giants. Uh, but the main thing is the price that the Tigers paid for him. Now, I think in tandem, him and Taranto will still be important players and could work out really well in the years to come. But just individually wise, the Tigers gave away the future first. Now, this year's pick, they finished bottom 10. It is going to be a top 10 pick they've given away. And I'm pretty sure as well, around a late 20s pick, I am pretty sure as well, they've given away. So plenty of draft capital they've given up for Hopper. And look, I think Hopper, a few games this year, he's been quite impressive. He's averaged around 21 disposals, so it isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, just the injury prone hasn't uh, really helped him out and probably hasn't met his expectations on you know, how much uh, the Tigers have given away. You know, a top 10 pick for Hopper. Really think about it. I don't think that's really worked out to be too great in the end. But uh, yeah, let's hope he has a strong preseason and can have some consistent game time this year. But yeah, just probably hasn't really worked out from this season. I do have Hopper in 17th. So just above Jacob Hopper in 16th place, I do just have Jager Amira slightly above um, Jacob Hopper. Now Hopper's probably maybe had averaged the more disposals. That's definitely fair enough. But just given that the uh, the, the Dockers pay pretty much nothing to get Jago Amira is the reason why I do have him slightly above. And he's had some nice games this year for Fremantle. That's definitely safe to say. I'm pretty sure he was part of that Lloyd Meek trade and they gave away around a future fourth, I want to say as well. So there was pretty much nothing for Amira. And yeah, he's gone under the radar, I feel, um, a few times uh, this year for the Dockers. They, I think they are still crying out for that um, David Mundy replacement in the, from the bigger picture. But yeah, I just think with the young uh, group that the Dockers still have, he's going to be an important part of maybe their leadership group or just the veteran or mentorship that he will probably bring and will end his career there. So yeah, they paid nothing for Jager Amir. He's had some nice games this year. His play rating is quite decent as well. I think it's slightly above Hopper. So yeah, there's that to consider as well. So yeah, Amir in 16th. In 15th place now, I do have one of the biggest trades that we did get from last year. 
Brody Grundy from the Melbourne Demons. It just hasn't really worked for him in Demon Land alongside Max Gorn. He has now stated he doesn't want to play forward, so he's pretty much 99% surely at the door at the end of this year. Look, I think this year with a few games, especially in the first half of the year when he was playing forward, I think it was working out quite well. But just as the games and the and the season wore on, Melbourne slipped a little bit with their ability to put on a bit of a score. He was dropped. They tinkered around the forward line. And now he just doesn't fit with Max Gorn. So I just think individually wise, he should be higher up there. I think his output's still been good numbers wise, but just team impact wise and from those circumstances, it just isn't working uh, with him and Gorn in the same team. So the trade probably hasn't worked. They only gave away I think a pick 27, pick 28. So it isn't the end of the world, but um, yeah, just rank basing it off the trade. Probably just not going to be a uh, match made in heaven. We all thought it would be last year uh, with him and Gorn. So yeah, got the uh, the big man of Grundy in 15th. In 14th now, I do have Jack Gunston from the Brisbane Lions. The Lions paid absolutely nothing to get him. He is 32 years of age, but I'm pretty sure it was like around a pick 50 and a pick 60 odd for Gunston. Now, Gunston's been a little bit in and out of the side this year. Of course, he was alongside Dan Rich, announced to Chris Fagan. He said he wasn't good enough, so he went and played in the VFL. And, no, sorry, he went and trained and came back on the side. And look, I think he's been pretty serviceable for the, uh, for the Lions this year. There were some high expectations with this trade. We all thought this could potentially be one of the trades of the year. It hasn't worked out in that way, but just, you know, the price was basically nothing. We all knew it was going to be a good enough trade, and he's been serviceable. He's kicked over 20 goals this year. Unfortunately, he did go down with that knee injury. I'm pretty sure he's still a chance to play finals footy again, so he can still make an impact. Um, but yeah, he's just added an extra focal point in the Lions forward half when he has been in the side. He's had some nice games, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Gunson 14th. I think he's been, uh, yeah, very nice for the Lions this year when he has played. Now I move on into 13th place, and I do have Bobby Hill from the Collingwood Footy Club. Pretty much, essentially, the Pies only paid a second round pick to acquire his services. It's really worked this year. He's really been important for the Pies now. The last few games of this season, he's been he's tapered off quite a bit. But yeah, this first half of the year, he was like a house on fire. Kicking goals for fun. Just getting out the back with goals. Uh, a few goals when he was just sprinting from around the wing position into the half forward. Um, you know, he's an excitement machine and he has been a bit of a highlights package for the Pies this year. I was thinking of honestly putting him higher, of course. But, uh, you know, he's kicked... Uh, what's the number? He has kicked a grand title, 25 goals this year. So yeah, I think he's definitely hit the expectations and definitely they've gotten their value um, out of Bobby Hill this year, the Pies. And I think he's going to be a big play come finals time. Um, and yeah, he's just had an awesome year, I think, from his expectations, Bobby Hill. Now we're moving on into 12th place and I do have Liam Jones from the Western Bulldogs. Quite simply, the Doggies paid nothing to get his services through free agency. The Blues kicking themselves that they did lose Liam Jones, of course, with all those um, COVID mandates and all that whatnot. But uh, his impact this year for the Bulldogs, Liam Jones, has been superb. And oh, just in retrospect, it's just such a shame he went down with that long-term injury. He still played 18 games this year, but if he was able to play every game this year, Maybe the Bulldogs would have been in finals because he was a huge part in their back half. The main interceptor, averaging around three intercept marks a game, which is just uh, terrific numbers. He was putting them himself up there, maybe around the top half of the top sort of percentage of uh, elite key backs in the competition. He was huge um, in terms of their back half. And yeah, just uh, from what they did pay the Bulldogs and the output he showed was remarkable. So he definitely deserves to be high up there. Got Liam Jones in 12th. Now move on into 11th place, and I do have Willie Rioli from Port Adelaide. I think his second half of this year has been electric, and really, in retrospect, if you really do look at some of his goals this year and some of his performances, he's been an absolute match winner, and he's kicked some great goals. He's kicked 27 for the year from 17 games, which is pretty good. He missed a few out with injury and a few with suspension, of course, as well, so he could have played a lot more, but uh, yeah, he was part of that big Jason Orn Francis trade. Um, so yeah, I think Port Adelaide are really doing well with that trade. A young, young midfielder, and really rolling on top of that as well. I think he's yeah been a, a huge part of Port Adelaide's forward half. You know, the injuries, when you still look at it, they've had a bit of injuries here and there, but you've got, um, you know, Jed McEntee, and then you have Francis Evans, and Willie Rioli. A few of those role players have really made an impact, um, and especially Rioli has. He's um, kicked some great goals, and he's a bit of an excitement machine. So I do have him in 11th. Now I'll move on into the top 10, and this is where things get pretty exciting and maybe a little bit controversial. 
We'll kick it off in 10th, and I do have Carl Amon from the Hawthorne Footy Club. He was a free agent, so it did cost the Hawks absolutely nothing, and uh, yeah, his numbers have been very good this year. Averaging around 22.7 touches a game. We all know he is um, a All-Australian squad uh, player from last year from Port Adelaide, so we know he is a talented player. Um, and yeah, just in the grand scheme of things, I think Amon's going to be important. As part of their rebuild, maybe similar, as I said earlier about Amira, just with that young group, they do have the Hawks. Um, a veteran player, so he will be an important mentor. Play almost every game this year and look I think just with the expectations and a uh, player he is he hasn't really put in a foot wrong he hasn't played out of this world he hasn't played bad he's putting really consistent performances together good play rating um, averaging a good amount of possessions and uh, yeah I've got Amon in 10th I think he's had a, a very nice year now move on into ninth place and I do have Toby Bed from, from the GWS Giants maybe you could put this guy honestly a little bit higher because his impact this year for GWS has been huge a play not really to look too much into the stats apart from the pressure acts that's definitely in the elite category uh, but uh, yeah I think it was around a pick 44 that the Giants paid for him it was all, it was just nothing it was an absolute nothing trade we all thought it would be but um, the reason why the Giants obviously recruited him for, is because of his pace and his pressure that's been his two biggest assets this year he's been able to kick some great goals from pressure and um, yeah his pace his ability to really burst out of uh, congestion and kick some nice goals this year um, he hasn't actually been too much of a goal kicker but he's just been a, an important cog in that Giants forward half and he's made some a few nice cameos this year with a few nice performances so yeah I think his um, impact's been a massive one on the Giants and I do have him in ninth. and now we move on into 8th position and I do have probably one of the most underrated players almost from this whole list I've got Ollie Henry from the Geelong Footy Club still do not know how this guy didn't make the 22 under 22 side he's kicked over 40 goals for goodness sake and the price that the Cats got him for I still think is an absolute ripper it was a pick 25 and this guy obviously was a first round pick and he was a pretty highly talented player come his draft year and we all knew um, the X factor and the potential he had so I think the Cats played a great price for him of course Cooper Stevens they gave away but that's pretty much nothing he didn't play a game for the Hawks this year apart of that three way trade but yeah you know over 40 goals this year he's just um, an X factor player um, he, he kicks some He's kicked some great goals this year. He's an athletic player, can take some remarkable grabs overhead, um, and I just think he's going to be important for the Cats for the next few years with, you know, maybe Cameron and Hawkins slowing down. There's also Stengel and, um, and of course, now Grind Myers with a bit of a break year, and Ollie Henry's the big one. Over 40 goals, I think he's had a, a remarkable year and definitely exceeded expectations, I do personally feel. And now in seventh position, I do have Tom Mitchell from the Collingwood Footy Club. I think we all knew this guy was going to be a good acquisition for the Pies this year. Just another one of those important midfielders that would be able to extract it out of the contest, give it to your likes of Degoe and a few of those explosive midfielders, get in and go, and he's just ticked the boxes you see Mitchell. Now, the second half of the year has been interesting. He's been dropped um, a few games, but... I wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just because of, um, you know, the, the depth they have, Collingwood, and, you know, just some, so many great players playing on the same wavelength. So, yeah, I think, again, for the price, it was a, a great price then that the Pies got him for. I think it was around a pick 40 or something. It was, around, it was a, one of those low picks. So, yeah, the value was very good for Mitchell. And, yeah, he's had some nice numbers this year. He's averaged around 25 touches. He's yeah, two thumbs up from me. Uh, I, think he, I think he's going to be important come finals as well. So, with that said, got Mitchell in seventh. Now we move on into sixth place, and I do have pretty much a deserving play here, I do personally feel. Play Cake is from the Carlton Footy Club. Now, halfway through the year, definitely I wouldn't say he would have been the sixth best recruit, uh, whilst Carlton was sort of down and out. I think across the whole span of this year, he's been able to um, be a, an important role player for the Blues with how they transition the footy from arc to arc, um, and he's always been part of that chain, but uh, especially second half of the year, whilst Carlton have been up, up and about, has been a great one. Of course, you all know he isn't the greatest kick of the footy, he always is a bit of a hack kick, but he finds plenty of the football um, and he's just an impactful player I think personally you know he always has some good attack on the footy on the outside and yeah he's just had some impressive numbers this second half of the year so yeah he's a player that has really impressed me as the season has gotten on especially when Carlton have been up and about the price as well um, they got him for a third round pick which I think is great value probably one of the most uh, best value acquisitions out of the whole trade period from last year when we do look at it now in retrospect so yeah Akers I think has had a really good year and maybe could be potentially a top six top seven finisher in their best and fairest consistent year footy especially the second half of the year really uh, elevated his game got him in sixth now for the big top five and this is where things get pretty tasty in fifth place now or well, these top five is probably one of the big top five biggest recruits from what we did here from last year fifth place 
Jason Orn Francis from Port Adelaide. Um, now, he probably hasn't set the world on fire, but we just know this guy's going to be a gun because he's shown some great glimpses across the span of this year. He is averaging under 20 touches, but his play rating, um, you know, a few games that has really been high up there. He's had some very impactful games. You know, the gulf between his good and his average game obviously still needs to improve as he does get older, but he's an impactful player. That's how he sort of plays his footy. And he's worked so on that midfield alongside the other young guns like Rosie and Butters. Um, now, when we look at it um, in retrospect, pretty much in the end, they gave away um, their last, pretty much all their draft picks from last year, and they have given away their, few, uh, their first round pick from this year. So I think alongside Willie Rowley on top of that, I think it has worked well for them because he's just going to be an absolute superstar. We know he's had some great games this year. Hornet, I've gotten fifth. Moving up in the ranks now, in fourth place, I do have Isaac Rankin from the Adelaide Crows, of course, coming over with one of the biggest trades from last year from the Suns. It was expected. We all we were waiting for Isaac Rankin to finally head on to South Australia, and it did happen last year. Uh, well, yeah, the Crows given away pick five, of course, and uh, this year's third and fourth rounder to get back um, a, a fourth round pick and pick 46. But, you know, the picks aside and all that whatnot, I think they've definitely gotten their worth out of Isaac Rankin this year. He did go out with that injury sort of um, with a few games this year, but Jeez, he's an impactful player, and I think especially with probably Adelaide's rise next year, he's going to be a huge one in their forward half. Another excitement machine adding in their forward line. He's kicked 36 goals this year. Again, it could be possibly more, but some of the goals he's kicked this year has been awesome. Some bananas from the pocket, almost like a Charlie Cameron or Eddie Betts-esque from when they used to play at the Crows. Um, an excitement machine, highlight reel sort of player. Um, and yeah, I think he, he's really um, shown some great games this year. At the Adelaide Crows, and he is still 23 years of age, so there's plenty to come for Isaac Rankin. I think he's been a great recruit for the Crows this year. Got him in fourth. Now, in third place, well, we, how the tables turn. I've got Luke Jackson as my third best recruit uh, for 2023. First few rounds of this year, you'd probably have him as the worst recruit of 2023. No action, Jackson, and a few of the presses, headlines, and all that whatnot. But, geez, he's really turned around this season. He's had some awesome games this year. He's, uh, of course, made the All-Australian squad. He made the 22 under 22 side. He's played every single game for the Dockers this year. And he's really been able to elevate his game as soon as, soon as Sean Darcy did go out around the second half of the year. But, yeah, we just know this guy's going to be a star. He's just, act, he's just his ability to work around the ground is very good. He's athletic. He's great at ground level. Um, and I just think with another preseason um, under the belt for him, especially at Fremantle, his chemistry and his ability for the Dockers is just going to go even higher and higher. Again, like they're giving up pick five this year to get him. So it is coming at a hefty price tag, but I just think his ability this year has been great. And we just know his, it's going to be even greater. His potential is high. So there's a lot of upside with this recruit. Um, and I still think his numbers this year have been, yeah, pretty good. Uh, given, uh, especially at the start of the year, they were terrible. So Luke Jackson's been awesome this year. I've got him in third. And now the top two. We all know who the top two are. It is, of course, the two probably biggest midfield recruits um, from last year. It's just who am I going to put second? Who am I going to put first? Second, I'm going to be putting in Tim Taranto from the Richmond Tigers. Now, I agree this guy probably should have made the All-Australian squad. His first half of the year was probably leading the brand low, putting up elite numbers, uh, just averaging over around 30 touches. Uh, I think I was quite close to putting him in my mid-season All-Australian side. But let's be honest, he did taper off around after round 15, around 16. He was honestly averaging around 23, 22 touches. I actually did the calculations with it. So, yeah, he did really drop off of how he did play. Um, and his kick efficiency is literally one of the worst in the competition. like like 40%. So that's his downside. And again, they paid a lot to get Taranto. But we all know the thing that makes Taranto a great player is just his ability to find the goals. He's a great kick of the footy towards goals. He's an impactful midfielder, a goal-kicking midfielder, which is always valuable. Um, so, yeah, again, the price haven't really taken into too much consumer duration, but Tim Taranto, we just know, based off ability this year, I think he has still been one of the top recruits um, of 2023, and I think he will be a big part in Richmond's rebuild or turnaround. I wouldn't say rebuild, but definitely turnaround. He's, um, yeah, still think he's going to be, um, probably will finish as their best and fairest winner, you'd think. Which leaves me with my top recruit of 2023, ladies and gentlemen, it is, of course, Josh Dunkley 
from the Brisbane Lions. You're looking at it now and you feel like, geez, Dunkley's pretty fortunate he did leave the, leave the Western Bulldogs given they didn't make finals. Coming across to a much better side of the Brisbane Lions um, and he's just boss it with it in, in a top class team this year. Just the situations and the circumstances when you think about it, he's moved over to a better side. It's just worked perfectly. Um, now, I, I think numbers wise, he hasn't really had the season like he had the Bulldogs last year, but it's harder to in such a high quality midfield probably and just a high quality side. Um, not trying to disrespect the Bulldogs or anything, but it's just safely said it's um, you know just in a bit more of a better midfield, a bit of a better running side. It's hard to put up those numbers from last year, but still 24.6 disposals, playing almost every game this year, around 13 play rating, which is very good. It's definitely up there. Um, you're tackling beast as well. It takes plenty of marks as well. Um, and yeah, just some of the numbers this year has been impressive. Love the way he's go he goes at it. He's just such a tough player, tough two-way runner, accountable player. So yeah, his year for the for the Lions has been awesome this year. Going to be a huge part um, come finals time definitely as well. But yeah, Josh Dunkley for me has been the recruit of 2023. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to lose my voice. I've been talking for quite a while now. There is my top 25 recruits from 2023. So yeah, Josh Dunkley, I think is the top recruit. Feel free to let me know what you did think of my top 25. Have your say down below in the comments. I'd always love to hear your fellas' opinions. Once again, everyone, thank you very much for watching today's video. And uh, yeah, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Go and enjoy. And apart from that, I will talk to you later. See you later, fellas.